we're still managing how we're going to do this, but we're just going to start by talking about Gigi Jackson because I think Gigi Jackson is maybe the most, the weirdest, most interesting yeah. prospect to evaluate think, in yeah. this class. Yeah. When I texted you, I, I, you asked me what else I want to talk about. I was like, let's talk about Gigi. Cause like, to me, he's going to be the hardest to for me in the class. I think without question, um, like, and just for those not aware, uh, reclassed, like he was originally a 2023 high school guy and, and reclassed to 2022, went to South Carolina, was their highest rated recruit of all time. Uh, Sam, how would you describe the South Carolina Gamecocks team? Um, Bad. Yeah. I will say <laughs> right now they play Georgetown uh, this coming week, actually, in what will be probably the showcase of the two worst teams in in high major basketball right now. Um other than Florida state, which that's, I don't want to, I, I, yeah, that's, that's a whole other thing, but uh, yeah, this, this team is weird. And I think that's what adds an, an other, another lens to it. I, I made this analogy to Sam before the pod, but like to me with Gigi, it's like going to the eye doctor and getting your eyes checked and getting those 8 million different lenses to go through. And I feel like with Gigi, there's just the most on because I'm trying to focus it and understand where it's at. Like you have really have to take into, to, into account that, this dude is 17 playing college basketball right now. Like that yeah. matters a ton in looking at how he's playing and factoring into what his growth could be um, and understanding what he is right now. Um, and then you also have to take into the, to account, like I, to me, this team really isn't built in a way that maximizes what he could be. Um, or, like, or maximizes good basketball. Well, yeah, that too. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's a, it's a very funky roster. Um, and then I think the biggest thing too, for me, like, I don't know what archetype he is yet. And I think that's what is so fascinating about him because I think so many players you can look at throughout the draft and be like, I can like envision what they're going to be in the NBA. And I think I look at Gigi and I'm like, he could go six different ways because he just yes. very clearly does not have his skill set figured out yet. And that's not in a, met as a bad thing. I think it's something I really learned the last year or two watching AAU basketball. Like I watched this guy who he's going to be really good. So keep this name in mind. Efiosa Oliogu, um, Canadian prospect. He is going to be fantastic, but I watched him play three games in one day and he looked like a different player in every single game. Cause he was a sophomore playing, playing up in, in 18s. Um, I mean, in 17s and, I think that's how I feel watching Gigi. Like, this is a guy who, like, you can see the outlining of of a lot of different things, but he's still kind of testing the waters and figuring it out. And it's just in a really I, – I think what I'm going to struggle with is trying to under – like, I, I don't know, like trying to parse through what I think I most see for him. Um, like, I think that there have been some ideas from people that – he could be like a very real shot creator and I am, I'm probably not there yet. I think that there are some, there are some ideas of shot creation, some things in there that are really intriguing, but um, yeah. So, I, so I mean, let's, I'm, I'm let's interrogate yeah, that. Yeah. yeah let, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. So I, I just kind of want to run through Gigi's situation a little bit more simply. Right. Yeah. So South Carolina's team they are a disaster when it comes to turnovers. They're turning the ball over on 21.4% of their possessions. They can't really shoot. They shoot 32.3% from three, and that's with Gigi shooting 40% from three right now. Chico Carter and Jacoby Wright are really the only guys around him that can even slightly shoot. Like, they're both over 40%, but nobody else is over 30% right now. And guys like Hayden Brown, Michi Johnson... They take them, but they just don't even get treated as shooters out there. So essentially, when Gigi is out there with both Carter and Wright, it's not as bad. But when he's out there with one of the two, which he is like a not in not a uh, I would say he's out there a fairly substantial amount of time with one of the two, not both of the two. Uh it becomes very difficult because teams just condense on him and constantly uh, attack his dribble when he tries to drive or try or like they, they just kind of are capable of making life very, very difficult for him in terms of spacing. In spite of that, he's averaging 17.2 points per game, 7.7 rebounds, 1.2 steals, 
but he is turning it over three times per game because he's tasked with initiating offense as a 17 year old who is six foot nine and like a big essentially, or like a bigger wing playing college basketball in a situation that is not well spaced. He is also a guy that has a 52.8 true shooting percentage right now in large part because those guards don't get him early looks. So I watched Mm -hmm. the Furman game this morning and there was a really great example in the first half where he beat his man down the court. He was able to kind of backspin off of him on the block and then completely seal him up to the foul line, gave his guard oceans of space to entry the ball into and the guard threw it out of bounds. So there's very little that is easy for Gigi if it's not just a reversal into a catch and shoot three. Uh, those are really the only times he gets easy shots. So now this is where let's interrogate the shot creation, right? Because that's actually something that like, I think we have okay reps on right now. Uh, we have like examples of him going around ball screens of him ISO driving. Like we've seen a decent amount of stuff with him actually being able to drive and do things. So what do you think of his hip flexibility? Because that's where I struggle with him a little bit. Yeah. I think you bring up a really great point because this is like, that's one of the biggest things right now. Um, Obviously not the same guy, but like it kind of reminds me of watching Jaron Jackson Jr. Sometimes because of like, you look at him and he plays with that hunch a little bit uh, because he has a really high base. And um, I think that's where I have some pause with him as a shot creator, because a lot of like, I do think he has like, his handle at his size is actually relatively interesting. Like I think part yeah. of the turnovers are coming from that, but also again, it's kind of the opposite mind, like, of it's like the opposite of Brandon Miller. Like yeah. I think Brandon Miller has super flexible hips and like can stop and start on a dime and like hit the brakes and then like string a guy out away from the basket and like pull him out, but doesn't really have the tightness of handle yet to be able to like really do damage off of it. Mm-hmm. Gigi, I think, doesn't I don't know if he has that like flexibility to be able to foster like real creativity off the bounce, but he does handle the ball well. Like he can actually like control the ball and like keep it like relatively tight. Yeah, yeah. Like he's had some like some decent stuff coming off ball screens, but uh, again, it's like if he gets funneled any direction other than straight, like he has to pick up the, uh, pick up the ball, um, or he just doesn't yeah. really get any kind of paint touch. And again, part of that is the spacing too. To be fair. Um, so it's been a lot of pulling up from, you know, 17, 18 feet um, or having to reset. And um, again, it's yep. not all like bad stuff. There's interesting stuff there. And I do think like the shooting touch has been like very solid. Like I think like the shot is real for me from three. Um, I don't know if I consider him a 40 percent three point shooter yet, but like I think he's been comfortable and capable. And that's that's big considering this the, the step up he's taking. And he's also like he's taking self-created threes. He's taking very deep threes. Um, like, it's not just like I'm taking this catch and shoot from the corner. Like, I do think uh, there has been some variety in a shot, too. Like, it's not fully off movement or anything, but I do think that there's been reason to be pretty intrigued by a shot. Yeah, and speaking of that variety, like, he's made pull-ups going both to his right, where he has to, like, plant with the left, plant with the right, and then go up. And he's made them, like, catch the ball on the block on the right side of the court pump fake pound dribble to the left and shoot on like a step back. So that's kind of the variety that you're talking about, Mark. Just like he can get it from a variety of different footworks from a variety of different kind of angles, which is super important. You look at his dribble jumpers this year, according to synergy, he's made eight of 23, most of which are from the mid range. Uh, But if you look at his catch and shoot numbers, he's made eight of 21 of those And all of those are threes. So he has a 57.1 effective field goal percentage on his catch and shoots, which is really good. And I don't know about you, but like if guys don't close out on him hard, I actually feel pretty good. Like I I feel like he's going to make it most of the time. Like it's pretty clean. Like if he can get, he mostly takes them off the hop. Like if he can get into his hop and there's no impediment coming at him, I think he's actually pretty good with it. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that for sure. Um, and he has like he's a good release point too. It's not like he's shooting it from from his shoulder. Like it's very much coming uh, on a good release point. I like where it's at. Um, as for like, and I think too, like he gets good height on his just actual jump. 
when he's shooting from the mid range yep. as well. Um, I think what's going to be interesting too, like the drive stuff, I've actually been pretty encouraged by us finishing through contact, which has really stuck out to me again with him being 17 years old. They've played like Colorado State is a they're not a big team, but they're pretty physical. They're still a very yeah. good team. Um, obviously they lost David Roddy, but I would they're gonna be a good mid-major team this year. Um, like Clemson had actually did give him some issues. I can't remember the name of their uh older forward, but he gave him some issues down the stretch. But like point being PJ like, Hall. Yeah, yes, PJ Hall. And he's had like some real moments of finishing through two or three guys. He had like a really nice Euro step in the in the Clemson game. Like again, it's all like it's not consistent. Like I think the finishing through contact's been consistent, but the way he's getting there is not. Like you're still kind of piecing that together. But I think the allure of a really intriguing face up player is there. Um and just like having some utility. Um where are you at with the passing though? Yeah, that that's actually what I was gonna ask you is just like I don't even know that it's passing. It's more like because it's almost not his role. Like his role yeah. is to go in and score, I feel like it's more like processing to me. Yeah. I feel like he doesn't process well when he gets faced with doubles. And I feel like if someone digs at him, he kind of panics, right? Yeah. Cause again, he can't really change direction. He can't really stop on a dime super well. And this is where like him being 17 and being the like number one option on a SEC team, this is where I think the evaluation gets super hard Yeah, because you want to believe that these guys is they play more basketball, especially super high level basketball, like Gigi Jackson is being thrown into right now. are going to improve their poise. They're going to improve their processing ability. There's, you know, just multiple examples against the, you know, I, the Furman game is stuck in my mind. Cause I literally watched it, you know, an hour before we uh, started this, but in the first half alone, like there was one play where he was on the left block, caught the ball, his man is kind of up on him high a little bit. And then a Furman defender comes around the backside and tries to go for the steal. And he feels it late and kind of panics and then just like throws a pass one handed and it gets picked off. And then he had one play where like he got a drive to the left out on the wing and then like tried to spin back. And then again, like because someone dug at his handle, it seemed like he kind of panicked a little bit and threw another like wild errant pass that resulted in like, I think it was like Furman batting it and then picking it off right at the basket basically. So I, I struggle to know what to do with the processing right now because it shouldn't be easy for him. He's 17. Like Furman is good. Uh, Clemson is old at the very least. Uh, you know, going back through some of the games they've played, they played, uh, South Carolina upstate, I think earlier this week. And he dropped like 22 points and was just more physically dominant than everyone on the court in that game. Uh, it, it's just hard. It's very, very hard to know what to do with the processing ability. What have you thought of it so far? Yeah, I agree. I think I would call him, I wouldn't even call him a low field guy right now. I think he's like somewhere in between for me. Like I, I don't think that he has a bad feel for the game, but I think it's more just like you mentioned in the situations with the ball in his hands, he feels really tight right now. Like, I think that's the best way for me to put it. Like you can tell that he's thinking things a little bit. Um, and I think that that's stuff that can improve, especially like more like since we're talking about him being 17 right now, like I think that that's the stuff that I'm really hoping we see improve as the year goes on, even if it's just a minimal amount. Um, and uh, yeah, I, again, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I think that's, that's the biggest barrier for me with him. Like, I think if that improves this year, then my projection and, and feel on him changes. Um, because, what what right, have you thought of the defense? Cause that's like another part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. That's an entire well. part. Um, I think that is where, again, it's going to be really interesting to see because I think there's really encouraging stuff on the yeah. perimeter defense. Like he has really good hands at his size. I think he has really yeah. good flashes as a perimeter defender. Um, he can get lost off the ball sometimes, uh, more than sometimes. Like he gets lost, lost off the ball a decent amount. I think he's had some flashes of rim protection, but again, like you really see him thinking things when he has to play as the low man, I feel like. Or even more so, like, I think he's so uh, – it feels like he's so focused in on making sure his man doesn't, you know, uh, 
get free or, or get the ball that he just kind of forgets to do help things or just is so focused on that that he doesn't. Um, yeah. And again, like that's something I think with more reps, more time can improve. Again, the flashes are really encouraging. And I think the other thing too, like he's good at doing like the easy shit, like the, the or not, not even that rebounding is easy, but like he's a very good rebounder at his size on both ends. Um, like the ability to, like you mentioned with the quick seals and he has not looked like he's not strong at all, which I think, again, that's something that's been impressive because especially being 17, like um, you do wonder like, okay, is he going to have issues like really playing against a bigger, a bigger big. And I think that it'll be interesting to see them play against Kentucky. Cause that'll be fun too. You know, anytime anybody plays against Oscar Shibway, um, shit, Oscar was probably playing his first year at West Virginia when Gigi was in middle school. So that's <laughs> for thought, but um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean like that it's, I think the how he improves his feel is what is going to differentiate for me between him being an energy player that maybe he gets rotation minutes and becoming something more than that. 